smelter. You can see the size of it, right? I don't, I don't know what all this is. We're gonna find out, right? We're gonna find out what all this is. But that's the stack, right? So we saw the Greenwood stack. Well, that's that's what it looks like when it's, you know, not a ghost smelter. But it's a huge part. It's a city in and of itself, guys, the smelter. Largest lead and zinc smelter in the entire world. So that's the trail smelter. So you see those two stainless steel plants? Those are the sulfur plants. So lead and zinc have lots of sulfur with them. The ore has a lot of sulfur. So they used to just blow the sulfur out of that stack. What you see coming out of that stack right now, that's just steam, guys. That's nothing else but steam. They used to, back in the day, just poof the sulfur out of the stack. And all these trees you see along the side of the mountains here, they didn't exist. So there was one job that like a whole bunch of guys in, that used to live here back in the day would have had. They just walked around planting trees because all the sulfur coming out the stack was just killing everything and there was no animals around. So there's no sulfur coming out of this, but what they did end up doing, it just shows you as technology improves, we get, we get better, right? They now use that sulfur that they were proofing out in those sulfur plants. They use that sulfur to make fertilizer. Those stacks, are sulfur vapors and you can't enter that part of the facility without a respirator because you're breathing sulfur vapors because it's inherently like everywhere. So what they do is they use the sulfur to create fertilizer to make everything sustainable. And car batteries, all you electric car guys out there and girls, when your electric cars die and you can't use them anymore and the batteries run out and they become useless, the trail smelter will then take your batteries and repurpose them and melt them down and take all the elements out. Be sustainable, right? Create sustainable technology through, you know, resmelting. So I don't want to hear it. Any comments coming up, I can already tell it's, the, it's in the wind there. Oh, environment this, environment that. Yes, environment's very important. But as you can see, there's trees on the hillside. They, they do 24 hour testing constantly. They recycle lead, lead car batteries. Um, all kinds of toxic materials that otherwise could not be recycled. So again, guys, before you start spouting off environmental stuff, you might want to actually like take a tour of the trail smelter or visit a mine and educate yourself. Like for example, at the Red Dog Mine, uh, which is where they get their ore from now, the First Nations community have a council there that looks after fishing and hunting. So they mine sustainably and then they consult the council say like has everybody got their deer once everybody has the stuff they, they start mining and stuff so mining smelting heavy industry that there is it's not like one or the other guys it never has been yes obviously back in the day some practices were not not acceptable and we've changed that since but this environmental ignorance i think is getting a little bit old because like i said the people at the trail smelter are it's all about sustainable technology guys so that's my rant over there's trees on the mountainside all of the sulfur and everything else is recycled that's that's it alrighty guys so Sasquatch here we are in trail take a look at it there you see the smelter up top there's no video footage allowed inside the actual plant so take a picture or whatever outside in the parking lot but as soon as you go through the gates you can't there's no pictures allowed but we're gonna get a video of the interpretive center so we're going up there and we are going to get a tour of the smelter. This is the Tech Interpretive Center it's the first day of tours today May 1st so we're bright and early Alrighty guys, so we're in the interpretive center now, trail, the tech interpretive center here. So let's go take a look, see what we can find. Zinc processing. The electrolytic and melting plant is the final stage of production of zinc. A purified zinc solution from the sulfide leach plant is added to the tanks in the cell house where the aluminum cathode, negative electrode, and a lead anode positive electrode are sitting in a circulating acid bath. As the electric current passes through the acid solution, a chemical reaction takes place in the tanks that causes the zinc to collect on the cathodes. The plated zinc is lifted out by an overhead crane. We saw the, we saw the cells and they lead 25 at a time and the cathodes are moved to the stripping machine. The zinc buildup from the cathode is peeled off the aluminum cathode, piled into bundles to be melted down. Cast into 56 pound, 25 kg slabs, and that's the finished product. Four cell houses totaling 560 cells, containing 2,800 cathodes and 500 anodes. Zinc electric cell houses enough electricity each year to power all the homes in a city. So this is the cell, pick up 25 at a time. That's the overhead crane. This would be the, the aluminum cathode the zinc is built up on the plate and then the stripping machine takes this plate strips the zinc off the plate and then it gets sent to the melting plant to get melted these are various different things that they produce at the plant they produce multiple things so indium zinc die cast stuff gold silver lead 
cadmium, copper, bismuth, all kinds of good stuff. And it's all made at the Tex Melter facility. Feed materials for the Kivet furnace, lead concentrate, recycled lead batteries, limestone, quartz, coal, coke, zinc plant residues, feed preparation, introduction, flash burn, electric furnace, drossing plant, the dross, that's the layer on the top, they scrape that off. That's all the crud you don't want. Lead refining, other products, feed and oxygen injection right here. So this is the Kivset furnace for lead smelting, lead processing, feed and oxygen injection, and then flash burn. Here's your coke. So that's coal. Whenever we'll talk about coal, coke is coal that's been cooked. It's all the impurities cooked out of it. So they're using coke there. And then the electric furnace and the heating electrode. And then the slag and the bullion. So the slag, like I was telling you guys, sits on top and it's all the crud you don't want. The bullion, which is the actual ore, the lead ore, pure metal, gets dropped down through here and then collected, obviously. Slag comes out here. And you're heating the material up here. And then the electric furnace is what's causing it to smelt. You can see here the gradient of the bullion, right? So blasting furnace, it's not too big, right? You're heating the material up, you're getting everything ready to go, priming it. And then as you get over the electric furnace, it builds up more. And then obviously gases, fire assaying. Yeah, they do a lot of testing here, 24 seven, constantly. Technical services, Warfield fertilizer operations, turns internally produced sulfuric acid and sulfur dioxide from the lead and zinc operations into three commercial grades of ammonium sulfate. Warfield business unit produces a number of germanium products, fiber optics, and plastic industries. More than 99% of the sulfur from metallurgical processes is captured at the trail operations, continuing to reduce sulfur dioxide emissions. Germanium is used in glass and fiber optic cables, in night vision devices, and in semiconductor and electronic and solar applications. Lead emissions, monitoring program, right? This is where they're monitoring air emissions, water, effluence, Ecological risk assessment. The smelter recycle building operates under the negative pressure to ensure airflow is directed into the dust captured. Exhausted air is filtered through a dust collector bag house prior to venting outside. Oh, nice. So the fresh air just comes in, negative pressure. Ventilation ducts. The newly constructed number one acid plant replaced two of the three existing acid plants. They only last like 20 years because the acid is super heavy. It just corrodes everything. Various different samples of things. So what we got tech is focused on producing metals and minerals essential for a low carbon future. Supply hydroelectric fire, efficient heat recovery within the operations and commercial developing technologies. I mean, the lead smelter uses the Kazakhstan developed Kivset flash smelting process to produce lead bullion. Lead concentrate from all over the world and other residues and materials recycled on site are blended and dried, mixed with powdered coal and fed into the Kivset furnace where it is heated to over 1400 degrees Celsius. The molten lead flows into a second furnace where ferrous granulars settle out of the bullion and are treated to recover the zinc and valuable metals. The bullion is purified to remove tin, arsenic, antimony, and copper and cast into bullions. Lead buttons are sent to the lead refinery for further processing. That's so they can track their quality of their product. In lead refinery, the impure lead buttons are refined using the Betts electrolytic process developed at trail operations in the early 1900s. After a six day acid bath, the anodes and cathodes are pulled from the cells and the lead plated cathodes are remelted in a refined lead melting pot. The pure molten lead is fed into either a pig or a jumbo casting wheel. Pigs weigh about a thousand pounds and jumbo's 2000. A layer of impurities called slimes, including silver and gold, form on the anodes and is scraped off. The anodes are remelted and the slimes are dried and transferred to the solar refinery for further processing. Lead is the most recycled metal and retains its quality no matter how many times you reuse it. Integrated process converts 99% of feed into salable products. Zinc circuit, acid plants, zinc pressure leach roasters, leaching, indium, germanium, cadmium, cell house, products to market. The acid plant is key, you guys. It's key. Checker coke, ferrous granules, copper arsenic, galena, pot dross, lead sulfate, kivset feed. Periodic table, very important. This is the flow sheet. Feed plant, Kivset smelter, drossing plant, copper products, lead refining, silver refining, silver gold, bismuth, lead alloys, and then you got zinc. So you've got basically got lead on this, lead on this side, and then zinc on this side. Cadmium plant for batteries, indium and germanium. There's a lot going on, guys. That's what zinc looks like, the actual ore. So you can see 
So trying to sell this to somebody is not gonna go very far. You're selling them rock that they can't use. When you smelt this down and you extract the lead and all the other stuff from it, because lead and zinc and silver are usually all found together. So this would be a mix of everything. Electro winding inside the zinc cell. Electric current applied. Electric current applied. So lead anode positively charged. And see how it's building up. This would be the electrolyte in here, which allows for the exchange on either side. And then the zinc piles up on it. So an electric current is applied. The anode takes the positive charge. The cathode becomes negatively charged with electrons on its surface. Zinc ions in the electrolytic fluid are attracted to the cathode. Layer by layer, pure zinc builds up on the cathode as the zinc ions combine with the electrons to form zinc metal. These are the actual cells. You can see, right, this piece of metal here, right? This is a lead, well, this is a lead one. And then these ones are zinc. This is an actual anode from zinc operations. And then this is what they're trying to strip off. This has a lot of impurities. He was saying you can't, some of these you can't strip, but if this was pure, they'd be, the stripping machine is what is stripping all of this off. But these are the electrolytic cells. When somebody says electrolytic cell, that's what they're talking about. There's an exchange going on here. All, all an electrolyte is, is water with like potassium or some kind of mineral in it that carries an electric charge. Because water by itself doesn't, but salt, for example, salt water, that's the most basic form of electrolyte. Because salt carries an electric charge. The same thing in your body. You need electrolytes to distribute the electric charges around your body properly. If you don't have, same applies to, you know, the science of extracting thing, right? Because you have aluminum cathode. Everything's attracted to it via the way the, just the physics of the electricity works. Zinc is an essential nutrient in human development. Transportation, about 1 million tons of feed raw materials such as lead and zinc concentrate, about the same amount of metal products plus sulfuric acid, liquid sulfur dioxide, ammonium fertilizers are received by or shipped from trail by truck and rail. Heavy safety standards. They have their own emergency response team as primary role issues related to transportation of trail operations, products and supplies, 24 hour basis. Yeah, they have their own fire department, their own crew guys. But these are the cells guys. Lead on this side, this is lead. It's actually the largest fully integrated zinc and lead smelter. There are larger lead and zinc specialized smelters, but it's the largest fully integrated one. 1896, 24 hours a day, 365, 1500 people, 200 contractors. Construction, transportation, electronics, telecommunication, medical equipment, power generation and transmission, domestic appliances, consumer goods, nutritional supplements. Do I need to go on? Sulfur products, fertilizers are created by sulfur inherent in lead and zinc concentrates. Oh, they use gold medals for the Olympic Games from trail. Zinc, toys, faucets, door handles, galvanized steel, roofing materials, vitamins, chocolate, batteries, germanium, indium, computers, electronics, TV, touchscreen, solar panel, soldering materials, sheathing, insulation, silvers, antibiotics, ointments, badges, and dressing. Things. Brass, which is zinc and copper, locks, gears, hinges, valves, couplings, musical instruments. Okay guys, history. In 1895, a small smelter named BC Smelting and Refining Company was constructed at Trail Creek to refine ores from the nearby Rossland gold mines. Over the course of 125 years and a few more name changes, consolidated mining and smelting, Kaminko, Kaminko Tech, and now Tech Metals, the smelter has grown into one of the world's largest fully integrated zinc and lead smelting refining complexes. It's discovered at Red Mountain, first furnace fired 1896. Copper gold smelter Fritz Augustus Hines in 1896 at Trail Creek Landing. Narrow gauge railway built from Rossland to Trail to move the ore. Red Mountain Railway. Canadian Pacific buys the smelter from the railway, forming the subsidiary Canadian Smelting Works to operate the smelter. West Kootenay Power completes the first plant, Lower Bonington, on the Kootenay River to supply power to the Canadian smelting workers of the Rossland Mines. Canada Smelting Works completes a lead smelting plant in a 175 foot stack. 1902, the world's first electrolytic lead refinery is built. The name it was changed in 1906 to to consolidated Mining and Smelting, Company of Canada, CMNS. World War II, lead, zinc, tungsten, mercury, magnesium needed for the war effort. In 1916, Pioneer Electrolytic Zinc Plant was completed based on the Sullivan request the Canadian government to supply zinc for brass in the war. It was one of only two electrolytic refineries in the world at the time. Differential flotation is a process making the separation of lead, zinc, and iron minerals as high grade as possible. It is the first successful large-scale differential flotation operation in the world. Okay, so that was great guys. We just finished up the uh, trail smelter tour and interpretive center. Amazing tour guys. Two hour tour, free tour basically. So you go to the interpretive center, you watch a video, they show you how the videos explain stuff on the smelter, the history a little bit. You then go up to the parking lot and the smelter and go get the tour. We saw the electrolytic refining plant for zinc as well as the furnaces, the melting area. Thank you to Tech for allowing 
tours of the facility. That's really awesome that they do that. And Trail Interpretive Center. Check Trail Chamber of Commerce as well. So anyways, guys, that's going to be it for me. Sasquatch out. Oh.